Hi, we're back. Uh, we are now going to go to a Chapter 9 review, and uh, it's going to be on the Thomas Jefferson, James Madison administration. We'll talk about things like uh, a Jefferson philosophy. We will discuss uh, Louisiana Purchase, Lewis and Clark, not just Lewis. Where there are some Clark fans out there. Yes, you. Uh, and then we're going to do a little... Um, a Marvin versus Madison review, and then uh, we'll talk about uh, Madison's little war called the War of 1812, and then kind of wrap things up uh, in about nine minutes or so. Okay, here we go. Uh, remember, Jefferson wins the election of 1800, the uh, otherwise known as the Revolution of 1800, where we have a, p a peaceful transfer from one party to the next, uh, from the Federalist Adams to the uh, Democratic Republican Jefferson. Jefferson believed in a limited government. Uh, he cut military spending. He's he, frugality, I believe, is uh, his, his choice of words. Uh, he wanted to see a small agrarian society uh, with um, with greater democracy for all individuals. Uh, remember, we are all Republicans. We are all Federalists, uh, as he uh, once stated during his uh, inaugural circa. March fourth, eighteen aught one. Remember the last thing that Jefferson, or excuse me, that Adams does uh, is he packs the courts with Federalists. Remember John Marshall uh, early on in uh, like January of one, and then uh, the Midnight Judges at the end of uh, his term. Mark uh, Adams puts all these Federalist judges uh, in the various levels of court system in, in, in the federal government. Jefferson, of course, uh, opposes that. And uh, he wants his own judges, and so he wants to see the Democratic Republicans uh, control the, the courts. And then he starts to uh, the impeachment process of, of some of the Federalists until that uh, kind of becomes dangerous after uh, going after Sam and Chase, uh, excuse me, Samuel Chase, uh, just because of uh, his political views. And so the uh, the court. The impeaching scheme was pulled back. Shame on you, Tom. Shame on you. Uh, Marbury versus Madison, a uh, pivotal court case in uh, early United States history. Uh, remember, the uh, case was with William Marbury, who was one of those midnight judges uh, appointed by Adams. He sues for his uh, for his commission that was withheld by James Madison, Secretary of State. Uh, bottom line, court case, Marbury v. Madison, Supreme Court Justice John Marshall declares uh, a part of the Judiciary Act of 1789 unconstitutional, therefore hence establishing judicial review, which of course is the key thing with, um, with Marbury versus Madison. Um, really, uh, that's kind of all you need to know. Um, now, Next on the docket, uh, after Marbury versus Madison, after his his limited government philosophy, um, you know he does not want a large debt. Remember, so he's, he's trying to cut things down. Jefferson uh, uh, was, you know, was the anti-federalist in the sense of he believes that if a large debt by the government causes uh, taxes and corruption, that's not Jefferson. Uh, he, so he, he's gonna that's gonna be his his goal. Um, reduce the, the federal budget. Um, next issue was Louisiana Purchase. Um, that basically uh, was when Jefferson sends uh, Monroe and Livingston to, to buy New Orleans. It's a great town. Drew Brees loves it. Um, and basically that's the mouth of the, uh, of the, of the Mississippi River. So Jefferson uh, sends them with $3 million to purchase it uh, after a Owned by, you know, controlled by France. After a slave revolt in Haiti, my God, Haiti, uh, which the, there's a slave insurrection, uh, Napoleon f figures if we can't even control Haiti, how are we going to control all this territory in the in, in Louisiana? Uh, so, short on funds, short on control, offers the. Uh, uh, the whole lot, the whole Louisiana Territory to uh, Jefferson for 15 mil, and as we heard in the debates, was it legal or not? Was it constitutional or not? We, it's pretty vague. So he, he employs a broad interpretation stance, purchases it, and um, 
basically doubles the size of the United States. So, um, you know, one of the goals is securing New Orleans. The second goal is obviously we now have uh, more farmland that uh, that to fill his vision of, of, of a, an agrarian society. Um, so, what's out there? What's out out west besides mountains and in 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 in, in bison, uh, maybe a little prairie dog, whatever. We don't know. So he hires up Lewis and Clark, Meriwether Lewis and Bill Clark, and sends them on an expedition all the way uh, to California. So map it out. Um, the, the goal was the Pacific Ocean. Uh, they kind of get up to Oregon uh, eventually after after a couple of years um, of, uh, of, of hiking and, and going on, on, on the rivers. Uh, now, the uh, the outcome of Lewis and Clark obviously is, gives us claim to the Oregon Territory, uh, that, which we have to share with Great Britain, and that's not going to be settled until uh, James Knox Polk comes into office in, uh, uh, in in the 1840s. Now, Jefferson is becoming, as I said before, much more of a Hamilton than, than Hamilton, uh, and he's actually. Uh, there are some a group of hardcore Republicans, Democrat Republicans in Virginia, known as the Quid Party, who uh, believes that their Jefferson that they once knew and loved is no longer the same Jefferson, and so they're breaking off from the Democratic Party and they started the the, the Quid Party, which was the you know the anti-Jefferson party because they because they believe that Jefferson was um, going to the uh, to the dark side. And so that's if you read about the uh, the old Republicans, or the or the Quid Party, that's what that means. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the War of 1812. I see I have three minutes left to go. So the War of 1812. Um, basically, the uh, French and the English were uh, restricting our trade uh, because they could, and Britain had the councils of order. Um, Orders of Council, excuse me, to restrict U.S. trade with all of Europe, and Milan Berlin Decree from France is restricting our trade uh, with, with Great Britain. So therefore, um, we're, we're, we're stuck. We're, we're, we're in the middle. Uh, add insult to injury, the uh, HMS Leopard, a British ship, fired upon the USS Chesapeake, uh, injuring and maiming 13 and, 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 and uh, uh from that, you had war hawks like a Henry Clay, uh, John Caldwell Calhoun, um, urging uh, Jefferson to, to, to go to war, but he would not. Uh, he instead went with the Embargo Act or his peaceable coercion to, to peacefully uh, persuade England to give us the right to ship. Um, and so he cut off all trade, which of course angered the, the Federalists and angered the uh, uh, Federalist New England and anger at the Democratic Republicans in the South, and so he basically um, hurt the U.S. economy with this Embargo Act. Um, from that, we have uh, um, a disastrous uh, economic situation, which then in 1809, we have uh, uh, a new president. The Embargo Act has been repealed. Uh, James Madison is going to start his peaceable coercion, and that was with the Non-Intercourse Act, which says we will trade with everybody but England and France. And then Macon's Bill Number Two was his uh, was Madison's um, proposal that if if England says we'll trade with you, then we'll trade with England and deny France. If France says we'll trade with you, then we'll trade with France and deny England. So whichever one gives us recognition, we'll stop trade with the other. And of course, uh, England denies us this, and uh, some that being a reason um, with uh, denying our trade, uh, inciting Indian attacks on the frontier, and some land hunger for Canada, uh, Madison asked for a declaration of war. Um, and uh, so in 1812, we are fighting the British. Um, not everyone was pro war, uh, there was a small segment of New England shippers. Uh, who met in Hartford, who um, they actually talked about secession. And uh, they were hardcore Federalists who were upset with this Madison's war. It's, it's hurting their economy. And so the Hartford Convention, uh, they were talking about 
um, starting their own country and seceding. So the, the secession seeds, are, they, they definitely run, run deep um, in this nation. So the result of the war, England kind of gives up. Um, we have some major Indian uh, battles that we won out in Indiana Territory, um, but all three of our attempts to go and invade Canada failed miserably. Disaster of epic proportions. Um, so Treaty of Ghent basically puts everything at the uh, uh, at status quo. Um, it, it ends the war, uh, that's for sure, but no land was gained, no land was lost as far as we are concerned, but the... Um, but one uh, major outcome of the War of 1812 generated extreme nationalism, extreme pride. It's a watershed moment, right? And we were talking about that in, in class. A watershed moment is a, it's a change in a course. And so after, World, after the War of 1812, we are no longer being dictated to by uh, Europe. We are going to dictate ourselves. Right? We, we start to dictate policy, not them. And that, my friends is the main result of the War of 1812. America, we are on our own. Have a good weekend.